I think we could start a new trend because actually I have to say that aside from the movies that we've been seeing at the theaters this year, which are absolutely transcendent completely, um, generally uh, our collection, our hard drive collection is like about a million times better than the average run-of-the-day movies that come out. And um, most of them don't even come close in terms of the mind training value. So you've got like the classics, we call them, that uh, like each time you wash them, it just washes your mind. You know, it's like, like uh, primo stuff. And then actually it's kind of like a habit, like, oh, let's go see a new movie, or I haven't seen that one yet or anything. I have to say literally that with a lot of the movies in the Movie Watcher's Guide, uh, and a lot of other movies, I've probably watched some of them probably 10, 20 times, maybe more, maybe some of them 25 times. And I have to tell you the value is enormous. This idea of, I've seen that movie before, it doesn't apply metaphysically. Um, it would be like going into a meditation saying, oh, I've done this before. Um, I don't really need to meditate again, I've already done that. Go shopping or do something, other activity, like it's an activity. Movie watching with the spirit, when you really give it over to the spirit, is not really an activity. It's actually, it's like a rinsing of your mind. And more than that, it's like a reminder of these very deep principles that are acted out. And, you know, back in the day, 2000 years ago, Jesus did most of his teachings in public with parables. Because the mind, you might say, wasn't even nearly ready to to comprehend or to even be touched by the depth of what he was actually speaking about. So he would frequently preface his parables with, for those that have the ears to hear, let them hear. He had to say that really over and over and over, because he was speaking of a wisdom and depth, depth that was covered over by so many layers of, uh, of darkness, that even though they were gems, People would just have to kind of take in whatever they were ready to take in. And you know, and that's why you, you can read the parables over and over. You can even the prodigal son parable, which is one of the favorite ones that he taught over and over with, you know, to really gain the full meaning of that. That that really is what the Course in Miracles is talking about, thinking you've thrown away your inheritance of the kingdom of heaven and and you've lost your way completely and you're completely lost and you have such unworthiness that you don't have, you don't feel the worthiness to even go back, to go back home. And so, you know, you, you finally, in, in the parable, he's, you know, he's feeding the pigs and thinking, you know, even my father's servants, you know, have enough to eat. I, I guess he finally compares himself to his father's servants thinking, that maybe I can go back and at least have food, because he's very hungry, he's starving. And that starts the journey back after it gets so extreme. And that parable was taught over and over and over as a teaching parable. But I'd say these movies, this, what you'll see today is a classic. And um, I know some summertime movie theater, theaters, I know in Salt Lake City there's a Century 16 and they, they actually show some of the classics as the world would judge classics, like Dirty Dancing is, was just showing there. Um, Patrick Swayze, They're bringing back the classics, that's probably back from the 80s or something. Um, I had the time of my life. You know? mm -hmm. It's a great soundtrack, and it's a, yeah, it's a great story. And, and yet, the movies we call our classics, they, they're classics because they have such deep metaphysical value that I'd say every time you watch one of them, if you watch it with openness and receptivity, you can see new things that you've never seen before. So it doesn't really apply that you've seen the movie before, because you, you have a deeper readiness every time you watch it, and then you can actually, you know, really see, so to speak, you can get into deeper meanings with the ultimate, which is accepting the atonement. You know, it, it's each time you watch a movie, if you have a willingness, you can be taken deep down toward the atonement, toward the correction in your own mind, and really that's the only point of anything. There's really no other point to anything on earth. Earth doesn't have a point. Linear time doesn't really have a point. But the point would be to accept the atonement, and then if you see the value in these, then 
then you could, you know, you could set up a, like almost like regular classic movies for regular rinsings of your mind. I have to say, most people who are into spirituality, they they put more time into bathing and cleaning their teeth than they do into rinsing their mind um, on a regular basis, and it's available. Uh, you know, so you could do it. So there's nothing holding you back from such rinsing. So this movie is just a classic, and it's funny because it's, it's the way it works. I was just a few days ago. They had all these. Had this thing on Yahoo about where are these stars now that were big in the the 80s, and one of them was. Bridget Fonda. I was like, oh yeah, because frequently these stars get used uh, in uh, some really classic movies. Little Buddha, some of you haven't seen it, Bridget Fonda plays the, the mother in Little Buddha. And in this, 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 that one and this one are probably two of her all-time classic metaphysical movies. To, to be a classic metaphysical movie doesn't necessarily mean it's going to do well at the box office or that it'll be acclaimed in the world. In fact, probably Tom Hanks' top movie of all time, metaphysically, he says was the worst movie that he ever made. So <laughs> it's this, there's a depth beyond the common everyday perceptions. Joe versus the Volcano, we just had a a powerful mini-movie that was made, and that was Tom Hanks. He's come right out in public and said that's the worst movie. He couldn't even believe that he would make such a movie. But, you know, if you look at it, you know, Steven Spielberg, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, two, two of the biggest names of movies and producers are there, and Meg Ryan playing all these characters, you know, and then he was probably just saying it was, in his eyes, probably like a dorky movie, but the profundity <laughs> is there. It wasn't really. And that's what, you know, Kevin Costner said about uh, Field of Dreams. They all, all the actors at the time, you know, thought, okay, we'll take a chance. It was like a risk to do a movie like that. They were prepared for a bomb, dead, and it just became what the world would say, a classic. It just had its 25th anniversary. But that's why I remind everybody that I've said it for years and I actually saw it in the course about a week ago, that the world is backwards and upside down. I always just said it so often that I thought, that I thought, oh, it's <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> we think alike, you know. <laughs> Ooh, okay, backwards and upside down. What would you do if you found yourself in a strange land, kind of like Alice in Wonderland, you know, where there's all the proportions are distorted and there's this Mad Hatter, you know, Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland is a great, you know, falling down the rabbit hole. Even the, the quantum physicists use the, the rabbit hole metaphor from Alice in Wonderland, but it's everything's out of proportion and, and it, Jesus says it's all backwards and upside down. So what's so great about this movie? What makes it a classic? Well, it's based on a, what the world called true story. So it's one of these things like just recently in the springtime we had Heaven is for Real. That was based on actual events of a minister and his little boy out in the Midwest, I think Nebraska, and his congregation, and his little boy who, who didn't die, but so he, you can't say he had a, a, a near-death experience. He was on he was on the operating table, but he had all these encounters with Jesus and angels and you know amazing things, and then the presence to just speak it. Um, that's what's so great about heaven is for real. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's amazing. It's been an amazing string of movies this year, both metaphysical and God's Not Dead, Heaven is for Real. It's just starting to flood in. I actually have to say, there's we've had a major string of classics going all the way back to the end of last year, which is about time. It's just like boom, home run after home run. Like you go sometimes X Men. You you wait, they're coming up at our movie. Uh, retreat that we're having in, in September, beginning of September, but sometimes we would wait for like, seems like months or years for the big home run. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good, it's a double, it's a triple, but then, boom, oh, gotta go see it. You know, it's like one after the next, after the next. It's like Babe Ruth and Hank Aaron taking batting practice. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. They're just home run after home run. Metaphysically speaking, this is like a reflection of our mind. 
as if no, there aren't really movie makers and producers, directors, actors, actresses. It's just our mind is like ready. And, you know, we got taste there in 1998, 99, right at the end of the millennium with Truman Show and, you know, Matrix and 13th Floor, amazing metaphysical movies kind of heralding, they were like, they were like heralding the coming of, of a new era. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, age of Aquarius, Aquarius. Movie-wise speaking, you're in it. You harmony and understanding. You know, this is this is what Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. were forecasting back. You know, in the 70s, the late 60s and the 70s. This is it. You're you're in the dawning of the age of Aquarius and. So these movies are coming out pretty regularly, but, but then we have our whole collection of classics which taken by themselves, you know, you know, you could easily, those are 52 weeks in a year, it's like the course is 365 days, you could come up with a 52 yeah. week mind wash um, that would absolutely blow your mind away because the classics have that much power. You know, it's the, the, a lot of the movies that come out, you know, they're just, you know, they're just not worth seeing, actually. They're not, they're not, they're not worthy of your time. Your time can be spent so much constructively and extending the message. And, and these parables, now that you kind of have the gateway into the inroads of it, I know that's one of Nikita's favorite ways of teaching is with the movies. It's like you've got the best tools, best tools you could ever imagine and, and it's so easy to teach with the movies, because people think of them as movies. They're like, oh, and then it's like, come closer, <laughs> like uh, Rafiki, you know, the monkey, you know, and, and Lion King, come closer, look again. Oh, I've seen that movie. <laughs> look again. You really haven't. And I'm sure, like, this is going to be a gem for Nikita, because it's, it's one of the all-time greats, but but for some of you who have seen it can happen to you, you know, you just, you feel the heart swirling, your heart bursting with joy, because it contrasts the thinking of the world with the thinking of the spirit. And movies, some movies can do that so well. Field of Dreams, if you build it, he will come. It was all about guidance. And yet it wasn't talked about as guidance. It was talked about this whispering voice, which made it much more acceptable publicly. If there was anything religious or anything had connotations of, you know, spirit or whatever, you know, it took you in so gently that you just were like with it every frame, every step of the way. And even people who have a huge resistance to spirituality or Christianity or religion would not be offended with that movie. They would be like, oh gosh, that was a good movie. They walk out of the theater, wow, that was great. It, it has to come in a way that they can receive it. And that's why people get turned off at church, they just have so many connotations in their mind. They don't see church, like we talked about Nikita and I, as a state of mind, they see it as a theology. And there's a lot of the theology that they, they think is hypocritical, they wouldn't touch it with a ten-foot pole, they'll never go back there again, they have no interest in ever stepping foot in a church again. You know, church attendance for, for decades has been on a huge decline because people can think of, they think there's so many other things that are much more interesting <laughs> and much more exciting than going to church. That's how I thought of it when I was a boy. I would do anything I could to avoid. I'd go sit in there and I'd sit, they'd sit me down in the wood, hard wood pew and I'd be looking out the window and <laughs> trying to think. But the, if I'd have known that there was this kind of church. <laughs> I'd have been the first one, I'd been in the front row. In the soft seat. In the soft seat, ready to go. And asking questions of the minister. But what, what did that mean? What did that mean? I just excited curiosity, you know, because that would have, this would have been the greatest church there is. And now that we've discovered it, why not use it? You know, it's great, we have a church service here, but it's like, it's, why not? 52 weeks a year, you know, you could, you know, that's partly why I think during the consolidation it was this talk of buying a movie theater. You know, it kind of sprang up in the kitchen and 
Yeah, I mean, I was starting to get links sent to me of movie theaters. It was like they were serious about, you know, yeah, I mean, we, really, that's our next day. We can trade in the monastery, we can, you know, this, like that. Because it was part of this outreach, like, I want, to, I want everyone in the universe to feel the same feelings I'm feeling. I want everyone to have the same access to this joy. I want to give it away. It's this, this feeling is not a place. It's not a place. You know, like Jesus says, the holiest spot on earth is where an ancient hatred has become a present love. Mm. That, that's what lights it up, is that feeling in your heart. And just that's the feeling with the movies, you can, you can give it away.